so that I can keep track of them all. I keep them all on this random shelf in my bathroom. Hey guys, it's Hannah, and today I'm gonna show you all the books that I brought back home with me for the summer. I have a whole bunch of books still at my apartment, but these are the lucky few, <laughs> few, that are here with me. Most of them I haven't read yet because I keep going through my library, which you know isn't a bad thing, but it does keep me from reading the books that I already own. But without further ado, let's just get right on into them. If I know anything about it, I'll tell you about it. If I don't, then I won't. And that's just kind of how this is gonna work. So the first book we have is The Vine Witch by Luann G. Smith. I saw this on Barnes & Noble, it looked very interesting. From what I can understand, there's this witch who gets like frozen in time or something, and the vineyard that she protects is getting attacked in some form or fashion, and so when she gets like brought back to life, she helps save it. Sounded like it could be cool. Next I have Agatha Christie, The Big Four. This is a Hercule Poirot mystery. I don't know what happens in this of her books, but I know that I love Agatha Christie books, and so I'm hoping I can get to that one. Next I have The Vienna Prelude by Bodhi Thone. I believe this is set in World War II. I believe it has something to do with musicians. My mom got this for me at some point, and I've been meaning to read it for quite some time. I'm just haven't gotten around to it yet. Next I have Thick as Thieves by Megan Wallen Turner. This is the fourth book in the Queen's Thief series, which is a fantastic, fantastic series. One of the books is one of my like top three books of all time. I love this series so much. This one wasn't my favorite in the series because it doesn't follow my favorite characters as much, but I highly recommend. It's a fantasy book, action-packed. You will fall in love with the characters. The world is incredible and I highly recommend this series. Next I have The Portrait of Emily Price by Catherine Ray. I've read another one of Catherine Ray's books that I'm blanking on the name of, but she kind of is inspired by classic novels. The one I read, I think it's Dear Mr. Knightley, but it's kind of inspired by Daddy Longlegs by Jean Webster. And I believe this one is inspired by Emma by Jane Austen. That's kind of what I know. I know there's a chef involved. I think Italy is where it is set, or at least it plays a big role in it, something like that. But excited to get to this. Next, we have Christy by... Catherine Marshall. This is the book that my mom said I needed to read. She gave me this copy and I have yet to read it. No clue what it's about. Her it's great. We'll get to it eventually. <laughs> Next I have Ray Bad Ray Bradbury. Ray B You know the guy. The Toynbee Confector. Don't know what this is about. I know I've liked his books before and I picked it up at some point. Need to read it. I love his author photo on the back and his little black cat. It's so cute. Next is Vengeful by V.E. Schwab. This is the sequel to Vengeance. Vicious. Vicious by V.E. Schwab. And I have yet to read it but I loved Vicious and so I need to get to it. I don't know. I think it follows some of the same characters but the main character for this one is different than the main characters in the other one. I think. I'm not quite sure but excited to get to it. Need to get to it. Hopefully we'll soon. Then we have Girl Sleuth, Nancy Drew and the Woman Who Created Her by Melanie Rack. I love the Nancy Drew books. I'm collecting the whole entire series. And I was given this, I think, last Christmas. And I'm excited to get to it. I just haven't yet. Next is Allie Carter's Winterborn Home for Vengeance and Valor. I recently read this book, brought it back so I could put it with my other Allie Carter books. And I recommend it. It's a lot of fun. It's a middle grade and just super fun, fast-paced, great characters. Next is An Occasional Cow by Polly Horvath. I got this for free. I was at a bookstore in Belton and it was if you spent a certain amount of money you could get a book off of this free cart. And I was like, okay, and I picked this one up because it looked like it could be, could be fun. And I thought it'd be fun, a fun read for the summer. The next is The Adventures of Tom Sword by Mark Twain. I actually haven't read this book. I've actually never read a Mark Twain book. Don't yell at me. I know. So I really need to get on that bandwagon and I have this copy to help me do so. Next is My Antonia by Willa Cather. I want to read this book. I got this from my aunt, I believe, and it's just been my list for a while. Need to get to it. And then I have Essie Hinton's The Outsiders. This is another book that I really want to get to a classic that I haven't read. I think I got this at a bookstore in Indianapolis, I believe, but need to get to this. Next is Where the Crawdads Sing by 
Delia? Delia Owens? This was obviously very popular when it first came out. This is my mom's copy and she read it but then she didn't really feel the need to keep it and so she gave it to me. I have yet to read it. I do want to and it's just something keeps stopping me. I guess because I'm worried I won't like it but I feel like I might but I feel like I won't. You know it's one of those where you're scared to start because you just aren't sure. Next is The Invention of Wings by Sue Monk Kidd. I have only read one Sue Monk Kidd and that's The Secret Life of Bees but I loved it. And so I want to read more of her works and I've had this one for quite some time and I just never picked it up. I have no clue what it's about, but I know I like her writing style so I'm assuming that I'll probably like it. The Bridge of Clay by Marcus Zusak. This is his, I believe, still most recent release. I actually got a signed copy. Ta-da, that little scribble. And it's got a really cool book cover. So I'm excited to read it. I love, loved The Book Thief and I really loved I am the messenger so I know I like his books but I honestly think it's the size that is really intimidating me with this one because it's just so freaking big and I don't read a lot of big books anymore because I'm I've turned into the person who likes to get as many as possible done so I just need to get over that. Next is Five Dark Fates by Kendar Blake. This is the final book in the Three Dark Crowns series, which is a fantastic dark fantasy young adult series. And I already read this book, but I wanted to bring it back so I could put it with my other, I don't know where on the shelf it's gonna go because there's no room, but it's gonna join its brethren. Next is The Yid by Paul Goldberg. My cousin gave me this for Christmas. It sounds really interesting. I think it's set in communist Russia, I believe. Stalin's Russia, I think. Something like that. It just looked like it could be interesting. And she was like, let me know what you think of it when you finish it, which means read it. So I need to read it. And then City of Thieves by David ben Benoif. I knew what this was about at one point. That's why I bought it. I don't remember anymore. I think I saw the word Nazis. So I guess World War II. Is this the book about the eggs and they have to steal the eggs? Secure dozen eggs. Okay, it was very popular for a while. I picked it up and I just, I need to get around to reading it. Next is another Mark Twain, a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. I think I got this at Half Price Books at one time. And again, to get me to read Mark Twain, because I'm, I'm so certain that I'm going to love his books. I just haven't read one yet. I expect a video because there will probably be a video when I finally do read a Mark Twain but as of yet I still haven't. Vinegar Girl and Tyler. I haven't read any of her other books. I picked this up on a whim at Barnes and Noble. I believe isn't this based off of The Tempest? No, Taming of the Shrew. Taming of the Shrew retold as Vinegar Girl. I actually haven't read Taming of the Shrew so maybe I feel like I need to read that before I read this. I don't know. Whatever the case is I just haven't read this book yet. This one is The Bear Book by Jack Samson. It's got this gorgeous bear on the cover. There's the spine. And I picked this up in Savannah, Georgia. There was a really cute, there was two really cute bookstores there that we went to. But I picked this up at one of them and it's just, from what I can tell, a collection of different stories that are about or surrounding or involve bears. There's illustrations. I love bears and so I'm very excited to get to this. Then I have The Walkable City, How Downtown Can Save America One Step at a Time by Jeff Speck. I don't remember how this got put on my radar. I think I was listening to the podcast, What Should I Read Next? And it was recommended to someone, but it sounded very interesting. And I am a big fan of downtowns, specifically like small town downtowns, but you know, city downtowns are also super cool. And I just think it'd be a really fun read. That I have not read yet. Next is When the Men Were Gone by Marjorie Herrera Lewis. I read this a while back I think. Um, I picked this up at a Texas book festival I think three years ago, two years ago, something like that. And I really enjoyed it. I thought it was very fun. It's a very fast kind of simple read but very enjoyable and based off of a true story. So I'm just bringing this back so I can keep it here and have more room on my bookshelf in my apartment. Next is Walk Two Moons by Sharon Creech. I picked this up, I think at like thrift books or something because it just looked interesting and if I added a little more then I'd get free shipping and I thought it'd be a fun read and I just haven't gotten to it. And then finally, I brought Getting From College to Career by Lindsay Pollock. This has been on my currently reading for almost a year now. That's not, that's not how far I've gotten. I jumped around because this was originally a school assigned book and so I would jump around for it but then I realized you don't have to read the book for the class and so I stopped reading the book and here we are. I do want to read the book because I did like what I had read so far. I do think it'll be very beneficial. Just haven't 
made myself finish it yet. So, once again, brought that back with the idea that I will read it. Will I though? We don't know. And that's it. Those are all the books that I brought back with me for the summer break. Hopefully, I will get through a considerable chunk of them. But we all know how summer works. I usually go to the library too much. and uh, Not too much. We know you can't go to the library too much. But I check out a lot of books and then it means I don't read the books that I have here when I really need to. So we'll see how that goes this summer. Historically, it doesn't go the best in terms of how many books I own that I read. Maybe that'll change this year. So that's it for this video. Comment down below and let me know what books you brought home from the summer if you are transitioning between a college apartment and your home, however that's working. Also comment down below and let me know what is a book that you have had on your currently reading for a long time but you're not technically currently reading it. I also have that Hamilton book. I don't even know where I put it anymore. And that's been on my currently reading for years. So make me feel better. Comment below a book that you've been currently reading for just a really long time. Embarrassingly long if you're like me. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see y'all again on the one soon.